Hey everybody, welcome back to the Time Pass Podcast. This is your host, Ashika. Thank you so much for joining me today, you guys. If you haven't done so already, please like me on Facebook at Time Pass Podcast. Follow me on Instagram at Time Pass underscore podcast. And check out the YouTube channel. You can watch all the episodes of the Time Pass Podcast on my YouTube channel. You can find the link for that in my bio on IG or on my website, timepasspodcast.com, along with lots of bonus content and show notes. Also, if you're an auditory listener, please do me a favor and like, subscribe, and follow the Time Pass Podcast on your listening platform of choice. I would greatly appreciate that. All right, you guys, I am going to do a little recap today. I attended an event, and it's been a long time since I did something like this, but in this new age pandemic virtual dating world, I figured let's give it a whirl. Now, if you listen to the Time Pass podcast, a couple weeks ago, I put on an episode with Archit. Sashadri uh, called the Indian date, the Indian American dating experience. Well, Archit is part of a um, Indian American matchmaking company organization called Banyan Way. And Archit and I were talking post recording, and he told me, he said, Hey, you know, we're having one of our hello events uh, this Saturday. And I think it would be cool if you if you attended, if you wanted to attend. And I said, you know what? Let's do it. Now, so the hello events that they do are speed dating events. They're virtual speed dating events. And guys, I had done speed dating in person, IRL, in real life, in my 20s. Here in Sacramento, actually, and it was at um, this bar on J Street called Harlow's. <laughs> Shout out to Harlow's. Harlow's is known for having like cool bands and stuff like that, but speed dating was happening at Harlow's and I did it back in my 20s. So I felt, I feel like I have a good comparison as far as what an in-person speed dating event is like and what this virtual speed dating event was like. Anyway, I thought about it and I decided to hop on. I mean, why not, you guys? I'm still single. I'm not dating anybody. There's no man in my life. Who knows where I may find my man of my dreams. I was going to say future ex-husband, but that's really pessimistic, okay? So we're going to say man of my dreams. Who knows where I would find him? And the thing that appealed to me about this event is that it was nationwide. So there were people that were going to be logging on from all over the country, all over the U.S. And I thought that was really cool because I feel like I am open. I'm open a long distance. So I was like, why not? Let's see how this works. I was a little nervous about how the platform, how it would be organized, how, because it was on Zoom, so that was the platform, but how they would organize it so that it still felt like a real life speed dating event. Uh, but let me just say, I was pleasantly surprised. I think Banny and Way did a great job with it. Um, the theme for the event that I attended was 12 chapters, so it was like, book themed a little bit and I didn't really understand I didn't get it like when I registered and I saw that the theme was like 12 chapters I was like what does that mean is this like is this like book club like what is it but I was so pleasantly surprised and I think the theme was key in making this event less awkward for people and I'll go into the, the details later about why but um, I think it was really key, and I think Banyan Way did a really smart job by having these themes to their hello events. So I registered, and they were great with sending like email reminders and things like that. And I think it was like, I think it's like twenty to twenty five dollars, so it's fairly affordable for a shot at love. I mean, that's less than a first date, so like, why not? Um, so I hopped on, you know, they were good with the, um, reminders and announcements and they send you the link to join in about like an hour before the actual event is supposed to occur. And so I was really good about it. Like I hopped on and Archith was hosting. So he did give me and the Time Pass podcast a little shout out. So that was, um, really appreciated on my part. 
but it was great because I think they were really smart because they did like a whole room, right? So it was like a Zoom, a Zoom like room. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Like a Zoom room you log into and everybody's there. Like you can see everybody gallery vision if you want. Um, and then after, you know, they made all their announcements, we did intros and it was really cool because they wanted everybody to just do a short intro, like name, what do you do, what's your favorite book, blah, blah, blah. So um, I thought it was cool that they got interactive and made people speak and start like using the initiative right off the bat because they did it popcorn style. Do, do you guys all remember popcorn style when we were in elementary school and we would have to read books and um, the teacher would be like, okay, you're gonna read this chapter or these many sentences and then you get to pick who goes next. And so that was like popcorn style, right? So that was cool because they started off, they picked somebody to introduce themselves and then it was like they had to popcorn pick the next person. This to me was really fascinating, okay? They started off, um, I think whoever it was that was speaking last, maybe Archit, maybe someone else, one of the other organizers, but they picked this girl and I kid you not, you guys, the ladies were so shy, they would not pick a guy. We went from like, ten, we went like 10 ladies in a row before one of the women that um, got chose to introduce herself actually was like, I'm gonna change it up and pick on a guy. And <laughs> literally I was sitting here and I was like, yes girl, do it, that's the energy. Like, let's get everybody talking. It's not a all girls club and it's not an all boys club. So let's do this. So I think that introduction part is really important if you're doing some sort of online virtual speed dating event because you get to actually see, cause you can do speaker view in Zoom and then it highlights the person who's speaking, but you can actually see all the people very clearly. You can, you can see, you can hear their voices. So it's like auditory. You can hear if you, if their voice sounds pleasant to you or attractive, or if you think it's gonna be annoying for the rest of your life. <laughs> um, you can hear also how they speak. Are they eloquent? Can they put their words together? Are they more nervous? Do they have an accent? Do they not have an accent? How comfortable are they in English? Like you can gauge all of this into introductions. And um, what I was doing was actually like checking everybody out to see like, who was I going to be most excited to chat one on one with? And um, for me, actually, there was one person that caught my eye. And so I was like, OK, like I'm looking forward to that. But it was really neat to hear other people and where they were from. And you guys, I was so surprised. There were people from California on there. There were. I would say there was a handful of people from California. There was a handful of people from Texas. A uh, handful of people from New York, uh, Georgia, and Philadelphia. Did we have any other, like, it was, it, it, we had a lot of people from, like, kind of all over. So I thought that was really interesting, and I also thought it was neat, because, like, who, who knows how you meet somebody, where you meet somebody. Some people are a lot more mobile, so I, th I thought that was really cool. And I was definitely shouting out my California peeps through the whole process. But um, I think number one, like that's really cool that you can connect with people across the state, Indian Americans, that it was fantastic. I was actually surprised uh, because it's Indian Americans, you didn't really have, there were some people that maybe migrated from India when they were, um, you know, more adolescent, maybe like a younger age not particularly born here or maybe a little bit of an older age so they still carried a little bit of an accent but i i was pleasantly surprised at how um american a lot of the candidates daters <laughs> the people on this speed dating session were so i thought huge bonus like i feel like banyan way targets indian americans and i feel like they really hit their mark with this event because that's exactly what I saw on the platform for this event. So after we got through all the introductions, they kind of explained the rules and it was it was genius. The way they did it was they broke people out into breakup room, breakout rooms. I ha okay, so sometimes I run Zoom meetings for like work and have to do things. I don't even know how they did those breakout rooms. Shout out to whoever was 
organizing all the Zoom breakout rooms and moving people back and forth because they did a pretty damn good job. I have to say I wasn't really like, I never got like messed up. I think I moved from room to room as I was supposed to. So shout outs to whoever's running the tech at Banyan Way because they did a phenomenal job. But um, so it was cool because there was an odd number of people so they had set something up like a chai room which i thought was a really cute idea and it was just i got stuck in the chai room first but it was everybody who couldn't be in a breakout room was in the chai room and you could just have a group conversation and mingle and it was so funny because uh the first chai room like for the first few minutes was all females because i think this event had slightly more females than males uh, but i know that that ratio differs depending on the event so I thought we would just like we started off with like a girl chat and like you know me like I'm like so like well whatever <laughs> I was like hey ladies who do you think is cute and all the ladies were like quiet they didn't want to dish with me they didn't want to spill the tea so I was like okay like that's fine but we did talk a lot some people asked for advice some people shared their funny stories actually there was a girl that was in my chai room and she was cracking up because she said she was so terrified because during introductions there was a male that had hopped on and she had actually gone out with him like and broken up with him like recently and he actually left because I think he saw her during her introduction and he kind of got scared or like didn't want to be there because it was awkward so he bounced out of the event but I thought that was pretty funny that was like my tea moment at the speed dating event. But it was neat because a lot of the girls and the men that came in, we got to just have casual conversations, ask people about themselves, random things. Like we talked about what we were doing for the weekend. We talked about dating tips, how to meet people. It was just a conversation that flowed nicely. It's a really good way to make friends too. Like you're probably not gonna meet your soulmate, especially not the first time around, but it's a good way to make friends too and connections with people. And I was surprised by how many people were, like I said, on the West Coast. So it was, it was great. I had fantastic conversations with people throughout the whole event. And then I went into my breakout room and <laughs> oh my God, I had forgotten how exhausting speed dating is because like you are just talking nonstop. So the way Banyan Way organized it was um, everybody had a few minutes with one-on-one. -on -one. So each girl had a few minutes with each guy one-on-one. -on -one. I think it was like maybe five minutes, maybe less than that, maybe like four, which I think is a good amount of time. It was fine. And I thought Banyan Way did a really good job with um, sending pop-up messages like, hey, you have 50 seconds left, your room's ending soon, wrap up your conversations. I really appreciated seeing that and it was funny because I think every person that I was paired with if I didn't bring it up like oh hey we just got the warning then they did so we we're all aware of what happens the, th the time that I hated it though was when you're having like a really good conversation with somebody and then like you see the warning and you're like oh they're gonna cut us off but then you go right back into your conversation because it's such a good conversation and then you're mid-sentence and it cuts out and so I think, I mean, that's the nature of the beast, though. That's what speed dating is. So you have to get, like, prepared with that, and you have to get used to it. Here's where I think that the themes really came in handy. Obviously, like, I'm super extroverted. I can lead a conversation. I can get, so I can ask them a million questions to get them to talk to me. But there are some people that either, like, you're just not interested in, um, or they're just super shy or super introverted and you're like, you know, how's your day? Good. What do you do? Engineer. What do you, you know? And it's just like, it's like, come on. Can we drag this conversation? Like, can you help me out? Help me help you. <laughs> and I would say this is where the theme came in clutch for me because anytime I got like ran through my basic questions that I could ask somebody, then I always fall back on the theme like, oh, so who did you say your favorite author was? Or like, who did, um, what's the last book you read? Like, do you actually like reading? And I felt like that helped fill some of the awkward silences. So I think that having a theme is genius 
because I know I fell back on it at least two or three times when I was in a room where somebody was probably not as talkative as I am or just not giving me as much as I was giving back. And it helped fill the silence because I feel like you don't want to be awkward either and just like stare at each other and just be quiet or like turn your camera off. So it's best like, who knows? Like meet people, talk to them. They could be your friend. They can be somebody you network with, somebody that knows somebody that could be valuable to you in the future. So it's a human exercise. Like get to know people. It's fine if you're not interested in them. That's completely fine. But get to know them. There's no harm in that. And so um, I feel like that was a, a really good time and a good thing to have the theme there. And then when we all went through our rounds, it's a two hour event. When we all went through our rounds, we wound up back in the main room with everybody, the entire gallery of people. And then they just kind of wrapped it up and allowed time for um, announcements and then Q&A at the end. And I thought it went well. It went right on time. It didn't go over, which I was very appreciative of because I had dinner reservations right after the event that I had to make, which was like half an hour away. I made it to dinner perfectly on time. So I was super thankful that everything worked out that way. And overall, I thought Bang & Way did a great job. Uh, I would recommend their virtual dating, speed dating events. I think it's something to try. I think just as a person, if you've never done speed dating, like you should try it. It's just an experience. Also, it gets you talking more. It breaks you out of your shell. It sharpens your communication skills, your presentation skills. So I would definitely recommend it. I say if you've never done it, at least do it once. If you enjoy it, you may meet somebody. Do it multiple times. Who knows? It's so funny because right after I did that event, uh, was it Monday or Tuesday of this week, one of my good friends from Austin, uh, she sent me an email, and it was for another speed dating event put on by somebody else at the end of January. And so she was like, hey, do you want to do this with me? And I was like, <laughs> I called her and then I dished on the speed dating event. I actually recommended she attend one of Banyan Way's speed dating events, but um, I think we may do the other one at the end of the month too, because why not? Like I said, why not? I'm all about this life. I'm willing to try it out and it's cheap. There, are, These virtual speed dating events are like less than a first date. It's like 20 bucks, 30 bucks at the most. Just do it, girl, do it. Now. The question you've all probably been waiting for, how does it compare to a real speed dating event? Pretty darn close. I would have to say it's quite comparable. Now, yeah, they're not right in front of you, so you can't tell how tall they are, how well they're dressed. I mean, everybody's dressed well from like the top up at least. I know I was. I had on like my workout leggings and like a cute top and my hair and makeup done. But um, it's hard to tell, you know, it, how people look physically. But you can see the picture, so you can tell if you're attracted to their face and what they're wearing and their hair and whatnot. But I feel like the purpose of those speed dating events in general is to meet people and see if you can make a connection. Whether or not that's done in person or virtually, I don't think it's a deal breaker. I think I felt like I got the same experience when I did it in person than when I did it virtually. I felt it was a pretty comparable experience. I feel like the only thing that I did during the in-person uh, speed dating event that I didn't do during the virtual speed dating event was afterwards, the in-person one, because we were at a bar. If people wanted to hang around, we like grabbed a drink and, and you could chat people up more. Uh, but I thought it was pretty comparable. And the other thing that I liked, and this happened in my in-person event as well, was you just tell the event organizers who you're interested in. You don't have to make a commitment right there. And some people may like be like, hey, I like you. There was one guy at the event. Literally, we were talking for like a minute and he was like, here's my number if you wanna connect on WhatsApp. I'd really love to talk to you some more. And I was like, you're a great guy. I'm just not interested. I mean, I didn't say that to him, but I was like, I'm just not interested. So I was just, I was polite. I was like, oh, thank you so much. That's great. You know, but I like not having that pressure on me and having to make that decision right away because you want to see like everybody and see how you feel about people. So what you do at the end is you email the organizers, like your top three people or people that you liked and wouldn't mind connecting with. And everybody does that. So then if there's a match, like both parties indicated the same person, then they'll connect you. 
and that happened to me in in-person speed dating and out also virtually and I like that because like come on we don't need more people calling us prank calling us ghosting us texting us that we're not interested in like it's just not it's not the business we don't need that in our lives so I really like that part as well. I did indicate that I was interested in somebody, but I haven't heard anything back, so maybe he wasn't interested in me, but he was also in Philly, so like I don't really know if that was gonna <laughs> work, but we had a great conversation, and you know, I think it's an easier way to get rejected too, because it's like, oh hey, I liked him, but I didn't hear that he liked me, and it's like, okay, like that's fine, like, no harm, no foul, because I think what it is, is it's because they don't know that you indicated interest in them, right? Like, I'm sure there were people that indicated interest in me. I don't know who indicated interest in me, because I only indicated an interest in a certain amount of people. So if the people I indicated interest in didn't say that they were interested in me back, I'm not going to hear from the organizers. So if there are people out there that indicate interest in me and I didn't indicate interest, they'll never know that, you know, I even know their names. And I think there's a certain security in that, you know, you don't feel so like denied or rejected. Like, oh, they knew I liked them and, and they still turned me down. Like, no, you never have that awkward sort of feeling. So it's a little easier to like get over like, oh, sad face. I like this guy, but I guess he didn't like me. Um, it's easier to get over it because you're, you're like, he doesn't even know that I liked him. So, haha, <laughs> doesn't really matter. Anyway, you guys, I don't know what it is, why I'm doing all these <laughs> speed dating events or thinking about doing all these speed dating events. Maybe it's because Valentine's Day is coming. I'm seriously thinking about having like an anti-Valentine get together. Either that or like a Galentine's. I don't know. But I, I, I don't know, I guess I'm just like determined to keep putting myself out there and see if I find my person, who knows. But I'm definitely more open to love this year and trying to put myself out there a little bit more in new ways because I feel like I've done the dating apps and I need to do more than just the dating apps because obviously the dating apps aren't working at this point in time. But you never know, there's new people getting on the dating apps every day. So that's all I've got for you guys today. I would say if you ever wanted to check out a speed dating event, whether in person or virtual, do it. Girl, just do it. It's a lot of fun. It's a great experience. I would say I had a great time with Banyan Way. So if you want to check those out, I'll link Banyan Way in my show notes on the web website, timepasspodcast.com. So you can check them out there, you guys. And I would just say, like, keep putting yourself out there. If you're serious about finding love, find new ways to put yourself out there. There's no shame in that. I think that's really um, truthful to what you're doing. You're not going to find Prince Charming by sitting at home. He's not going to come knocking on your door. So put yourself out there. There's no harm in it. It's fun. And you could meet your person or a really good friend or a connection, a networker, somebody you don't, you don't know. So... Do it, it's fun. All right, you guys, if you haven't done so already, please like me on Facebook at Time Pass Podcast. Follow me on Instagram at Time Pass underscore podcast and check out the YouTube channel. Make sure that you like, follow, and subscribe to the YouTube channel where you can watch all the episodes of the Time Pass Podcast. Do me a favor, Time Passers. If you listen to this show regularly, if you like listening to me, share this show, share one of your favorite episodes with at least one person. Let's spread the word that the Time Pass Podcast is where it's at, y'all. I would greatly appreciate that, you guys. Stay authentic in whatever you do. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there, you guys. Have fun, and I'll see you next time. Bye.